Well, while all the players are finding it quite tough at the World Juniors, there's one guy who's cruising ahead and that's uh, Evgeny Stembuliak who's sitting with me in round number 9. You got the better of Minia Kostachi. Uh, yeah. And I am from Romania. Yeah. Uh, but playing really well, he was unbeaten in this event. Yeah, I mean, he's playing very solid chess, so it's very hard to beat him. Yeah, and you had the white pieces, so any any specific ideas before going into the game? Uh, yeah, so like I decided to go c4 and I wasn't really expecting e5 move. I was uh, I was expecting more like King's Indian or Slav after c6. So yeah, but here decided to go... So you were expecting c6 or g6, something yeah. like that, yeah. but he went e5. Yeah, he went e5. Uh, and I guess he didn't have any games in this position, so... But I didn't mind this position, so because I had some ideas here. Okay, so you went knight f3, he went knight c6 and e3, which is not as popular as g3 or... Uh... No, actually, no, e3 is getting more and more popular, so okay. everybody just started playing e3. And here bishop b4, now it's mainstream, queen c2. And here he took on c3, which is the main line. And uh, I never played b takes c3 in a classical game before, so mm -hmm. he was probably expecting queen takes c3. Okay. Yeah, so, but I decided to play something else. So actually all three recaptures are possible here, or...? Uh, no, like you don't want to take with your d pawn. Yeah, because here there is e4 and the bishop on c1 is dead. Hmm. So in this case, b takes c3 is much more combative than queen takes c3. Because uh, yeah, bishop takes uh, pawn takes c three is more interesting, I think. Mm. And yeah, many people already play this, like Carlson, Wesley Saur, and some other Dean Lejean, and some other players. Okay, so castle. So castle, yeah. He already, he after I, I after I took with the pawn, he already didn't know what. I mean, he he didn't prepare that for sure. So here he already spent maybe like three or four minutes for castling. Mm. So d three. D6, bishop e2. Yeah, and here you know, in such positions, I'm always worried about a pawn sack like this. But and uh, then your actually, structure is just. I mean, this is an interesting pawn sacrifice. Actually, computer likes it, but some for some reason, no one ever played it okay. before. But uh, I mean, it's the position is super complicated here after e4. So that's why many. I mean, I guess almost everyone plays d6, which is solid, and black shouldn't be worse here. Mm. Okay, bishop e2, and he went queen e7, which is the main line, e4. Now he was threatening e4. Yeah, and here there is two moves, knight e8 and knight h5. He decided to go for knight h5. Yeah, but the problem was that here he already had like 55 minutes, maybe, or like 57 minutes. And I had like one hour and 30 minutes on my clock. And I still knew maybe like at least 10 moves ahead wow. from here. So, so opening preparation does help. <laughs> yeah, so I went g3 here. The idea is to play knight h4 and also take a f4 square under control. Hmm. Yeah, so here he has to play f5, because otherwise I will just go knight h4. Yeah. So here I take, take, bishop h4, this is the whole idea, I want to get like a bishop pair. So he has to go queen f7, take, take, bishop e3. Yeah, you play bishop e3. And here... Uh, the f2 is hanging, so you don't have any possibilities yeah. like g4 yet, but now g4 is a threat. Yeah, now g4 is a threat, so he has to go knight f6, castle, knight g4, I still I knew this move, rook a b1. And you are still in your theory. Mm, yeah, rook b1, and here uh, the line that I analyzed, I guess, was knight xd3, pawn takes, queen g5, and bishop f3 is a very interesting pawn sacrifice, mm. queen takes e 3 king g2. And my bishop is super strong, there. and this position is very tough to play with black. Yeah, but he played b6 instead. And after b6, I don't remember, maybe I analyzed every, something, maybe not, but I couldn't remember. So I just decided to play the most logical queen d1. I'm taking the knight, and he cannot really take on e3, because I will take back, and then I will play bishop f3, and he will have troubles on the long diagonal. Yeah. Yeah, so here he goes h5, which is the only move, I think. And now bishop d2, I think, was very important. Uh, he cannot really take on f2 here because of queen e1, knight h3, king g2. Now he has to retreat with his queen, let's say queen d7. And now after bishop f3, like this knight on h3 is stuck, pawn on h5, it's weak, so his king is a little bit exposed. 
So here he's probably very close to losing. Very interesting. And here I don't think uh, he can get this knight yeah. out. Yeah. So probably he's losing here. So he cannot really take and he went knight e7. I was more expecting rook e8 because knight on c6 still protects e5. So here it's harder for me to go f4. I mean, mm -hmm. let's say here I cannot go f4 because he has e4. So I think it was more precise. Yeah, but after he went knight e7, f4, now he's actually in big trouble because at some point I'm, I'm even threatening to play h3 and then play g4. And then, yeah, after it, h takes, h takes, uh, queen moves somewhere, then f5. And my bishops are super strong. I will put one bishop on f3, then king g2, rook h1, and his king will be in big trouble. Mm. So, yeah, here he went queen g6. Bishop f3, and he took on d3, which I think is the only option here for him. Yeah, because if he goes something like rook a8... Yeah, after bishop e4, he's in big trouble here. So let's say queen e6, then I go h3, knight f6, f5, queen d7, g4. And this position looks looks pretty promising for white. Yeah. But I think what he did was pretty logical. He took here, and then after bishop a8, rook a8, it seemed like black got some counterplay. Yeah, I mean, there is counterplay, but I felt like this shouldn't be enough mm. for, like, equality. Because uh, even, like, ideas, like, say, if you go queen f3... Yeah, queen f3 is... Trying to exchange the queens. Yeah, then he will take, take e4, and here, actually, his position might be even preferable. Yeah. Because uh, he, then he will transfer his knight to a5, c4 is a weak pawn, then he will go back knight f6, protect e4, and he has a very solid position. So, but the reason why I took on e5, because when you have an exchange, uh, an extra exchange, uh, you have to open files for your rooks. And since, I mean, especially when he has two knights. Yeah. So it's very important to open the files. He took knight e5, and here I took quite some time. I wasn't really sure what was better, but then I, after I calculated everything, I realized that c5 was the best move. Open more lines. Yeah, yeah open more lines. Uh, and here he went bishop, b, b, he took on c5. Uh, knight d5 was also interesting, I think, here. Uh, and if I take on d6, uh, let's say knight e3, but I think knight e3 is not a good move. Uh, okay, takes, takes, uh, rook f2. He cannot go knight g4 because of queen d5, and then queen h5. Uh, so he has to go rook f8. Then I go queen d5, king h7, or and then rook f1. And here I felt like this should be very close to winning for me. So mm -hmm. l l he cannot really go like knight d3 because, or like taking, taking knight d3, because uh, I, I will simply take on h5, then check on f7, and then I will take the pawn, and then I will take the pawn on c7 with my pawn. And it will, he will have hard time stopping my pawn. Yeah. Yeah, so here, he, he should probably take on d6, king g2. And here I felt like it should be very close to winning, because his king is a bit weak because of the pawn on h5. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was nice. So knight d5, uh, you saw all of that, but he took on yeah, c5? Yeah, he took on c5, which is the most logical move. And here bishop f4 is very import important. And here he just had to take on d1. And yeah, takes, rook f takes. Uh, and now knight e6, uh, 5c6, because uh, it's very important for him to save both of the knights. Otherwise, I will... You may just put, take. Yeah, I will take and then rook b7, and then he's losing here. So he has to go with this knight from e5, and if I go rook b7, then he has rook c8. And this position, I mean, of course it's better for me, but it's not easy to win at all. Mm. So I was... I was expecting this line, and here I thought it would be very complicated. Yeah, it's uh, like this knights both protect each other, and yeah. this pawn is protected. Maybe you could go bishop g5 and... Yeah, bishop g5, but then knight g6, and I wasn't really sure how to proceed. I was thinking about like improving my king and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but here for some reason he went knight d5, which is already, I guess, pretty close to losing. Cause um, first of all, like he let me uh, exchange his knight, very strong yeah. knight on e5. 
second of all, his rook on e8 is out of play. And uh, he gives me a lot of tempos to improve my rooks. So here I think it's already should be losing. But uh, okay, he won queen e3, king h1, queen e5, queen f3. And here his last uh, chance was to play rook e8. Mm. And after rook e1, rook b1, uh, he has to go knight e3, queen f7, king h7, and then rook f3. Yeah, and here he, he has a very tricky move, rook e7. So like I wasn't sure, like it feels like I should be winning here somewhere, but I wasn't really sure how to win. Yeah, but you could exchange the queen. Yeah, right? but queen f4 is the problem that he will take, and now he has, uh, if I take with a pawn, he has knight d5. So here it's not that clear. And you think this is not winning, this endgame? Like, I mean, this, this should be winning, but... I it, could it, just uh, get the a7 pawn somehow, or it's not uh, easy? It's not easy, I think, because his king will will activate uh, activate pretty fast, like king g6, king f5 at some point. Mm. So, I mean, it should be winning probably, but it's still a game, like... Okay. He definitely has some chances here. Yeah, but after he played c6, he's just completely losing. Because here, queen f7, and then rook e1. And in this line, if you go knight e3, then rook f3, and you cannot, you cannot save the knight. So yeah. if queen d5, then rook 1 takes e3. So queen d5 doesn't really help. So he went so he went queen c3, and here it's already a forced mate, I think. Yeah. That was nice. And actually, the finish was very nice because. Yeah. Actually, I mean, we should say thank you to him yeah. that he he decided to. He allowed you to board. check checkmate yeah. him. So, uh, beautiful game. Uh, there is one question which we want to ask you is, whenever we analyze with you, we see that you have tremendous positional understanding. So if you had to give one advice uh, or one book you suggest to improve positional understanding, what would it be? Uh, I would probably recommend, like my favorite book is uh, Zurich 1953. I think it's one of the best books ever written. By Bronstein, uh, yeah? By Bronstein, yeah. And there is also a new nice book uh, written by Gelfand. Mm. Uh, I don't remember exactly what Positional decision making. Yeah, yeah, positional decision making. That one is also pretty good. Okay. Well, thanks for the suggestions. And is this your first time you're playing World Juniors or you played before? Uh, I played before in 2015. It was under 16. And uh, I guess I got like 7th or 8th place. So but under 20 for the first time? Uh, yeah, under 20 it's for the first time. So you're in the lead now. We Maybe second board could be a draw. How do you maintain your calm? Because last two rounds always the pressure starts to uh, come up and you know you have to win. You see the title and... Yeah, I mean, during the game, I'm just trying to be focused and like not to pay attention like to anything else, just just chess. Yeah. Uh, also, like in the morning, I go to the gym, then I go to the pool, and also it helps me. To, Every day. To be, yes, it, it helps me to be concentrated. Fantastic. So you, you focus on your fitness every day. Yeah, because I feel like it gives me more energy, and yeah, and I feel fresh. But it requires a lot of discipline, so that's uh, really mm. wonderful. <laughs> yeah, but still, like if uh, if you enjoy it, so it's, then it's not a big deal. Correct. Well, Evgeny, thank you so much for sharing one of your uh, victories and the analysis, and we wish you good luck for tomorrow. Thank you.